द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह असी इस प्रोग्राम से तू हमेशा यू एस की पॉलिटिक्स में इनवॉल्व करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो जोड़े डिफरेंट परसपैक्टिवस है यू नो इत पॉलिटिक्स के उन्होंने बारे जाणू कराते हैं ये बहुत जरूरी है कि साड़ी सारी कम्यूनिटी किसी भेड़ चाल के वाग किसी एक पार्टी के पिछे ना लगे बट we make our elected representatives work for our sport sadi jehdi sport hai us nu earn karan aur is karke sade vaste bada zaruri hai ki assi samjhiye ki jehdi different parties hain oh ki ideology leke samne aandi hain ki policies leke samne aandi hain aaj sade kol skype de rahi jehde do guest hazir han ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਰਿਪਬਲਿਕਨ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਬਿਲੋਂਗ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਡੈਮੋਕਰੈਟਿਕ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਬਿਲੋਂਗ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਸਿੱਖ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਬੜੇ ਉੱਗੇ ਹੋਏ ਲੀਡਰਸ ਹਨ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਨਾਲ ਬੜੇ ਸਿੰਸੀਅਰ ਹਨ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਬੜੀ ਸੁਲਝੀ ਹੋਈ ਬੜੀ ਜੈਨੂਇਨ ਆਪਣੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਯੂ نو ਸਰਵਸ ਆਰ ਬੈਸਟ ਇੰਟਰਸਟ इस बारे असी गल करेंगे अज असी वेलकम करते हाँ सतबीर सिंह बेदी तो समय केंद्रा जी का सतबीर समय यू आर बोथ वेरी वेलकम टू द शो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर टेकिंग ऑफ द टाइम एंड असी यू नो लेट्स गो स्टेट टू द इशूज सतबीर ਤੁਸੀਂ ਰਿਪਬਲਿਕਨ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਹੈਗੇ ਹੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਉਗੇ ਹੋਏ ਲੀਡਰ ਹੋ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਸਾਡੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਦੱਸੋ ਕਿ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਇਟ ਦੈਟ ਦਾ ਰਿਪਬਲਿਕਨ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਸਟੈਂਡਸ ਫਰਮ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਯੂਰਸੈਲਫਸ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਡੈਮੋਕ੍ਰੈਟਸ ਅਮ ਫਰਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਫੋਰਮੋਸਟ ਆਈ ਫੀਲ ਲਾਈਕ ਥੇਰ ਇਜ਼ ਓਨਲੀ ਵਨ ਏਜੰਡਾ ਵੈਨ ਇਟ ਕਮਸ ਟੂ ਡੈਮੋਕ੍ਰੈਟਸ ਔਰ ਰਿਪਬਲਿਕਨਸ ਹੂ ਆਰ ਅਮਰੀਕਨਸ ਫਰਸਟ Mm-hmm. that's what i like to start off with to say uh, you know when we represent uh, the us and we've been living here for a long time we represent us as our country so it doesn't matter what party you're from as long as you do the right things now comes the pol- political part of it um republicans on the one hand always one of the biggest things that are our young adults our metro cities our adults that came to this country uh, they always figured hold on we were in the metro cities we were in the major cities for example new york city's majority of it democrat uh, so we land in new york city and we figure okay we're democrat oh you know look these are these are our leaders we grew up uh uh looking at all democrats we really didn't know the republican party at all until we stepped out of new york city uh, into long island for example i'm going to talk about myself coming out of the city and coming into the rural areas uh we looked at it and we said okay you know what um we came out to long island and we figured hold on a second why aren't we getting tax breaks why aren't we getting uh the free handouts that we used to in new york city uh why are the taxes so low in new york city but not in long island uh you know every politician that goes there always says hey you know uh uh we going to decrease the taxes for who who are you decreasing the taxes for so republican party what it really majority stands for is work hard and get paid right you work hard you get paid you're in the system and you're actually helping america go further that's what the republican party stands for uh whereas the democrats are let uh, some tell us uh, why is he in uh, the democrat party and what what's so important about it some sadbir ji da kehna hai the republican party stands for work hard get your fair share tusi ki kehna chahoge democrats se bare ch yes so I think Democrats uh you know I'll I'll stick with the same sort of analogy in in line of thinking that that Satbir brought up when it comes to working and and your your outcome on life the Democratic Party what we believe in is yes you everyone should work hard and and get and go where they get on their merits but we recognize that not everyone starts off at the same starting line and so even if you put in the same amount of work as a person next to you or your peers uh given your circumstances that you had no influence in having uh you may you may not get to that finish line and so what we believe in is doing what we can to make sure that everybody starts off at the same starting line uh that way it really is your own merit and your work that that reflects where you get in life not where you started on the track 
And so I think that's that's the main emphasis of the party as a whole. It's you know about opportunity for all, and making sure that everybody has equal access to that opportunity, and that where you're born or your skin color or other uh, factors that aren't in your control, that they don't determine, uh, already predetermine where you're going to start off in life and, and thereby where you can get. Uh, and so I think that's that's the emphasis of the Democratic Party is just to make sure that we're, we're creating opportunity and equal opportunity for everyone. You, you know, you've both uh, made uh, very profound points. And, you know, in my understanding, we uh, this, this speaks directly to the role of government. Right. We understand that a Republican Party here that doesn't believe in, uh, you know, a very big government. Is there, can they see, can they see small government, state rights, individual liberties. But, Sadhir, I would like to know that the government has a role in the role. I hope a Republican Party uh, believes in that as well. If you look at the last hundred years, all the important legislations, you know, Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, you know, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, even now Affordable Care, these are a Democratic Party de legislations, they are you know, una de acts. Hege. What do you think uh, the Republican Party understands is its role? W what would you say they have done in the last hundred years at least, you know, which tells us that they're in for the government? Let me tell you what the Republican Party has not done. Hmm. The Republican Party has not put the Afro-Americans into a ditch hole by giving them free paychecks, working people that can work. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history of Afro African Americans. I know us Indians are very predominant. We work hard for our money. We are successful people. We're entrepreneurs. I get it, all of that. Hmm. What the Democrat Party has done in the last 50 years is when the black community, African American community, started succeeding in New York City, guess what? The government now, let me tell you, when it comes to Republican and, and, and Democrat parties, I think both of them are the same to a certain point. But what happened in New York City in the 80s and 70s is drugs were introduced to the black community. They were prospering. But guess what? The Democrats do not want to take those guys out of that hole. They don't want, uh, because their major voting share, let me tell you, whether you're a Republican candidate or, or a Democrat candidate, both of them are for self-interest only. People, in order to get to go for an election, let me tell you, there's always a hierarchy in election. OK, there's no way you're running an election without somebody pulling your strings like a puppet because you're not going to get the backing of the government. You're not going to get the backing of the Democrat Party or the Republican Party if you don't play by the books. Coming back to the 70s, 80s, what happened was drugs were introduced to the black community. Black community started doing was introducing, saying, hey, the blacks should give business to the blacks. Let's make our community better. The minute the blacks started coming out and cleaning themselves up, the drugs were introduced. When the people could not work, they were getting free, free paychecks. You and I both know, when we look around the city, so many African Americans are very, I would say, physically unable to work. Why aren't they working? Why are they collecting paychecks? Because they have been disabled. They have been literally put aside saying, hey, you know what? We'll keep on feeding you the free paychecks. I understand the opportunity for all. I understand what Sameh said. It's absolutely true. We help the needy. Going back to the Sikhi, uh, uh, you know, being raised a Sikh uh, gentleman, just like Sameh and I and all the Sikhs that we represent, uh, we know what it's about, about giving everybody the equal opportunity and helping the needy. We understand that. But to a certain point, let's not disable them. Let's not put them so deep into the hole that they do not want to work. Summit? They get free paychecks. And guess what? They are still working. They're going out and hustling, but they're not showing the government they're working. Summit. So Summit. they can get the free paychecks. Gee, Summit, this free paycheck, is, that, is there any reality to that or is that a stereotype? So listen, in any, in any social welfare system, there's going to be abuse. There's going to be free riders. That that there is no world in which you have any sort of social program that's open to everyone where there is zero abuse. And Democrats don't act like that. That doesn't exist. We acknowledge that there is abuse in the system. There are those who abuse who abuse Medicare, who abuse Medicaid, who, who abuse social welfare programs. But just because those programs have have some level of abuse does not mean that the programs aren't worthy or don't work. 
Uh, in fact, if you look at some of the allocation systems, even at the state and federal level, that, that's worked into the system. You know, we know we know that there's people who aren't going to use the system correctly. But what we do know is that the overwhelming majority, the overwhelming majority, uh, use the system correctly, and it's beneficial for them. And it's by that by because it's beneficial for them, it's beneficial for society. Uh, and so, you know, to, to sort of pick pick the the entire, you know, <coughs> use use a metaphor to sort of to, you know harvest a bunch of apples and then say, oh, this app this one apple's bad. The whole harvest was bad. That, that's not a fair. That's not a fair thing. That's not a fair analogy, right? That, so that, that, that's essentially what a lot of this is about. Is saying is galte, there's galte, two Jari rakhenge ek choti ji break ke baad. Tusi break the road, the way forward. The way forward is all of it. To swagat hai. Main toh host Harjot Singh. Uh, Sadbir, jadi asi gal hune shuru kiti hai. You know, uh, welfare the uh, baad is asi gal kar de hain. Hamesha ek impression deta janda hai. Asi is impression na jind hain ki the Republicans are good for the business, or jere Democrats hai ge. You know, you use the wo- uh, word free handout. Main tonu uh, puchna chaanga. Is is there anything? Uh, you know, at least in the last hundred years, which you know, you will say is a, was a step that benefited business. Ek apna a samajde a theory ki you know you totally stay out of uh, uh, you know a market free market place it benefits. But math onu do ten instances when we look at 1929's big depression right 26 27th both so economy see it came in the hands of Republican president and Republican Congress. Sari regulations hatati ya we we had a major uh, disaster right. So the president right. Reagan. Unanets can then single-handedly, sorry, sorry, uh, he refused to have an industrial policy. Sorry, automobile industry, sorry, uh, paper industry, sorry, semiconductors industry destroyed. Crab kiti. President Trump did which kuch policies and jisse jaise dekhiya sada agriculture crab hoya. What? How would you say? What is it you would say that you have done? The Republican Party has done which benefits business. Small you business. You know, go ahead. Uh, should I answer that? Yeah, please. Right. So, so how does the Republican Party benefit business? You talked about the Great Depression. The Great Depression, if anybody knows about the Great Depression, for those of you that are watching, um, there were four or five different big families that caused the Great Depression. J.P. Morgan, J.P. Morgan family, Morgan family was the main uh, uh, reason why the Great Depression happened. When they shut down every other bank, all the local citizens were invested in banks, uh, having their accounts in banks. And J.P. Morgan really, the Morgan family really spread out the word that, oh, you're going to lose all your money. And everybody took out their money from the banks and put it in J.P. Morgan. And obviously, you and I know both that, you know, the money is never sitting around. The money is always being rotated, uh, bank loans, mortgage loans, the whole nine yards. So... Uh, the Great Depression actually happened because there was self-interest of certain families. That's got nothing to do with Democrats or Republicans. Coming back to Reagan, Reagan era, the 80s era was great for business. Listen, I came in 1984. It was fantastic for business. You know, we we were uh, we were thriving. The amount of money we used to make as newcomers, nobody can do that now. Uh, coming to Trump, certain policies, yes, I get it. You know, uh, uh, I'm not saying Democrats haven't done good policies overall, but they have kept certain communities in a lowdown. How how are we called minorities all the time? Why are we minorities? Why aren't we Americans just like everybody else? We need to stop saying we're Indian, we're this, we're that, we're Guyanese, we ni- we're this. We are American. Coming to Trump, one of the best thing he did for the country was, again, no free handouts. He went ahead. And let me ask you. Biden did not retract that ten thousand uh, dollars a cap on uh, you know uh, your tax returns on uh, taxes you pay uh, ten thousand cap right. Everybody was crying. Oh my God! Look what he did. Look what Trump did. Guess what? Biden came in is still intact. Trump put in the fifteen percent policy on imported from China. Right, the goods that are being imported for China. Nobody did that. We never asked the Chinese. We actually made the Chinese so strong uh, as Americans over the last eight, ten years when Democrats were in power. Guess what? Eight, ten years, China used to go from a tricycle, went into a superpower. Who, who's buying from them? 
80% of the goods that are coming in from out of country are China. Why isn't China giving us money back? Guess what? We're in garment business, right? We got hurt. We paid another $150,000 every six months for a say, because we were, we were paying that 15% duty that was taxed on us, right? But guess what? Overall, we got money back from China. We finally got money back from China. So Trump made a great move over there. I get it. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying Trump was our best president. He did everything right, right? But I know as business, he made some great moves, right? Reagan era, you talk about, again, we could go back and forth, right? Republicans are good for business. Democrats are good for business too. But what they've done to the country overall, the, I, I'm sticking to that free handout. That free handout needs to stop to enable our people. Because at the end of the day, if you're working hard, you are paying. I am paying these people's free handouts. Where is the government getting money? Sadir, so, so so what, what percentage of the population do you think gets this free handout? And, it's all the, ma and it's all the major question, cities. And another question. There's only one president who has tried to do anything about these free handouts, Bill Clinton, none of the Republican presidents. The only welfare program that was tried in this country was by Bill Clinton. But let me get back to the economy first. Uh, Same, uh, you know, this claim that business was there, Republicans are chain, Democrats are no free handout. Then, then. To see some numbers, can, can, do you want to tell us something about how the Democrats have fared uh, with the economy? Yeah, uh, so I'll do that real quick. And then I would like, I really want to address what was said before this. So the numbers speak for themselves. It's really simple. Uh, when the average annual growth rate, GDP growth rate under Democrats has been 4.6%, the average annual growth rate when there's a Republican president is 2.4%. That's pure statistics. That's straight from what the government reports. There's no there's no disputing that. Uh, the six, the six uh, fastest periods of job growth have been under Democratic presidents. The four slowest periods of job growth have been under Republican presidents. So the numbers there are straightforward. Um, so you know that's all I can say for that. I mean, it's, they speak for themselves. What I will say about some of the things that Sudbir brought up. First off, going back to the Great Depression, he actually proved the point of what Democrats try and do uh, through more regulation. You you said to yourself that the reason that that the whole J.P. Morgan family was able to do what they did was because there was no regulation on that sector of the economy. What do Democrats go in and do right after that? Regulate the banking sector. What do Democrats continue to do? Regulate sectors of the economy, especially when they highly influence the everyday lives of, of, of people. So thank you for proving one of the reasons that Democrats uh, push forth so much regulation on, on, on specific industries. Uh, then another thing that was brought up was the uh, Republican support for, for bigger businesses and, and, and businesses that the big businesses that, that, that spawned in the 80s and 90s. Uh, what I will say is, yeah, Republicans are really good at supporting really large corporations, uh, but they aren't great at regulating those really large corporations, which is why you have, when you have companies like Walmart, who are simultaneously the largest employer in the one of the largest employers in the nation, but also their employees are one of the biggest uh, beneficiaries of government uh, subsidies in the nation. Uh, so yeah, they, they support big business. And it's great that we have large corporations like Walmart that grew up in, like, like you mentioned, in the 80s and 90s. But you, 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 you brought up a business that now requires us to make sure their workers can still work 40 hours and put food on the table. So, you know, beneficial for, for big business, but not, not necessarily the you know, society at large. And the last point I really want to bring up uh, that you mentioned at the end was that regular people like him, successful people, we pay, we pay folks uh, to get these, what, do you call, like, what you call handouts. Yes, that's how taxes work. That's how that's how a government functions is through collecting taxes and then reallocating taxes to benefit the society as much as they can. Uh, so what you what, what we see is when you're talking about this, if we don't subsidize these things, if we don't pay for some of these things, I'll use, I'll use healthcare as a great example here. So if you don't, if we don't use government taxes and, and the people's money to pay for some of these health care needs of people, what happens? They still get health care, right? If a poor person with no health care walks into a hospital with a major injury, they're going to get treated. That's yeah. going to happen, right? And I don't think either of us are going to argue about that, that if someone can't pay for it for a major life-threatening, you know, procedure that they shouldn't get it. So they're going to get the procedure. But then what happens? That has to be paid. So because that person doesn't have any sort of medical assistance from the government, 
it gets put on the hospital, which gets put onto insurance, which means you may not pay it in taxes, but your insurance premiums are going to be way higher then. So, in, in, and then and the only other option to get away from that is to say, oh, if you, no matter what, you can't get medical care if you can't pay for it, which I don't think is a society we want to live in, where if somebody gets hit by a car, but they don't have insurance, they die, summit, right? Like, I don't summit, think, I don't summit. think that's a, fun, that's a fundamental question I don't think we disagree on. So, summit. I let's weigh it uh, but I, I would like a make uh, I would like to make a point on the other side of the break I see Mildia ek choti ji break the path the way forward is thought of it to swagata math or the host her joke saying some देखो सा जी कम्यूनिटी है असी इमीग्रेंट्स हाँ रीसेंट इमीग्रेंट्स हाँ असी यू नो मेहनत करते हैं और जिते थोड़ी जी अनफेयरनेस कम्यूनिटी कम्यूनिटी देखती है यू नो दे पॉइंट इट आउट मैं एक अटर्नी हाँ यू नो जब मैं यू नो आई मैरिड आई हैव टू डॉटर्स और जब आप अपने बच्चे प्लान करते यू नो वी हैव टू डू सम प्लानिंग आई आई डू वेल फॉर माई सेल्फ माई वाइफ इज यू नो सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर शी डज वेल फॉर हर सेल्फ यू फाइनेंशियल और राइट बट स्टिल दे वॉज सम प्लानिंग इन्वॉल्व राइट ये जी चीज असं देखते हैं टीन एजर्स हैविंग फोर किड्स एंड हूज पेइंग फॉर दैम द गवर्नमेंट वाई ओ मामा ए मतलब वाई वाई शुड दैट हैपन वी अंडरस्टैंड कि भाई नाइनटीन फोर्टी फाइव के बाद जो प्रोग्राम शुरू हो वर्ल्ड वॉर हो उन्होंने जोड़े घर वाले है हसबेंड है दे वेंट आउट फाइटिंग यू नो फॉर द कंट्री फैमिली में जो अर्नर से ही वॉज लॉस्ट वॉट इज द नीड फॉर यू नो कॉन्टिन्यूइंग दोज प्रोग्राम्स एंड यू नो एनलार्जिंग दैम उन्होंने व्डा कर key lord hai ki so i think there's there there's two points to be made here and yeah. so i'll start i think we'll I'll start the less controversial point uh which is that you know yes should people plan when they're having a family of course like that's that i don't think anyone disagrees upon that but the factor is things happen right and so this goes back to again sort of what society do we want to live in mm-hmm. do we want to live in a society where someone has four children as a teenager it happened right like it happened no so same same so, same so, same wait a sec it doesn't happen it you know there there are reasons why it happens not everyone is a product of a rape I, I, right I, and I, then this this uh, you know at the back of mind this security that the government is going to take care of it and some people might be planning it to get some money that that's that's welfare abuse and why should it happen So Tell let me. me. So I guess I guess then I'll start at the other point, which is going to be yeah. more controversial, but leads to the problem, right? I was trying to say why we have to address the problem is because we don't want homeless kids running around the street, right? Like if they're there, so we have to make sure that they're getting the basic housing it needs. But we'll put that aside and we'll go to the root of the problem. Why is it happening? So there's two reasons. One is lack of education uh, of sexual education, and second is inability of abortions and. Coincidentally, both of those things are stymied by Republican efforts. So you see, the actually the highest rates of teen pregnancy are in school systems where abstinence is the is the sexual education choice, or where there's no sexual education in schools. Uh, that's where you see the highest teen pregnancy rates, which are also all which are is a conservative model of teaching, which we see in conservative the states and conservative school systems. But then you say the same thing with abortion. The highest rates of abortion, uh, so the highest rates of teen pregnancy, are in states and in jurisdictions where there is limited or no access to abortions. And abortions, uh, historically and continue to be uh, stymied by Republican efforts, conservative efforts. So the reason that we have the, these family issues with too many kids or whatever you want to call it is due to both a lack of education and a lack of ability to deal with situations that do arise because of Republican efforts. So, but, so, Samay, so now we, but, Samay, and then being saying, in that situation. Samay, before I go to Sadhveer to get his response, you know, it's just, it's not, not just about uh, having these kids. Halivi is really, as we are sitting, you know the prices of lumber are three times because the labor is not available it's not keep the forests have vanished and that is so labor tax. is getting free money sitting home so there there's something in the psychology which you know uh, sadbir talked about and i would let sadbir address that sadbir your response please look i i i love the fact that same is very well educated about the statistics and all uh, and he keeps on going back to the statistics great statistics are great on paper what happens in real life what happens when you go down the block and you're talking about abortions and all that that 
that Republicans this or well, the major cities are New York City, you got DC, you got California, you got uh, Florida, you got these cities where a lot of immigrants are there, right? These free handouts have literally disabled them from working. You're talking about lumber going up. Lumber is going up. Why is it going up? Let me tell you, I, 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 I flip homes, right? I do many a year. I went, and this year I said, no more. I'm not going to flip. I'm buying. I'm holding. I'm renovating a little bit. I'm not destroying the homes. Why? Lumber goes. So I called up Canada. I said, hey, man, call the mill. I said, hey, give me $2 million worth of lumber, two by fours, right? Why are we getting this? Give it to me at wholesale. He goes to me, listen, people are sitting at home. They're collecting these checks. They don't want to work. I'm short of people. I don't have a problem of having wood because we have thousands and thousands of trees that can be cut down. But if I don't have labor, guess what's going to happen? I don't have the supply, supply and demand, and you're going to get hurt because when I can't produce enough and there's high demand, obviously the prices are jacking up. Again, all, uh, look, I get it, Sami. Uh, Democrats overall as humanity have really helped out humanity. I get it. Uh, you know, uh, abortion should be uh, uh, somebody's personal right. But New York City, New York State overall is a Democrat state. So why aren't we making our own laws? Why are we still having the same laws? That's number one. Abortion, yeah. People, look, I get it. You know, no planning, school education, we'll get to all of that. But abortion is a personal right. A person, a, a woman that's 15, 16, 17, gets pregnant, did not plan it. She should have the right to decide what she wants to do. I get it. I get the Democrat side. But... It's not that simple. If these people actually stepped out of the free handouts, and I know people that have been getting free handouts for the last 25 years. Rent control apartments, great. Rent control apartments are great, right? But 25 years, you're getting a free handout. What happens? You know, you don't want to go out. You don't want to work because you're getting a free handout. Look, statistics are great. It doesn't work in real life. Can I, can I, can I get Samay, response? Samay, your sure. response. So first off, I mean, you know, I just want to point out, you, you, you can bash statistics, but your only response to statistics so far have been anecdotal stories. I mean, I can give you a bunch of anecdotal stories to support my side as well. So that's why I use statistics is to, is to see the bigger picture, um, not just what's happening on your block or in your circle of people you know. So I'll just leave that about, you know, why statistics are, are reliable. But I, I will also say, uh, you know, I, I, you know, uh, con I'll confess, I'm not in, I'm not from New York, I'm not from New York City. I, I don't know the exact as, as much as you do, but I speak more from a national perspective. And what I'll say is this: and again, this has to do with statistics. The states that take in the most federal aid for individuals are red states. Louisiana per capita takes in the most federal aid than any other state in the union. You, and that goes across the board, that states that are red take in more money than states that are blue from the federal government for personal for, for personal welfare programs. That's that's a fact. And so, you know, I don't think and, and, and all and the top states, how, that, how it's how it's sort of out the Democratic mindset that creates these this need for constant support and funding. I don't think that's a fair thing to say. Secondly. And, and, you're, and if you'll allow me, uh, Sami, I'll, I'll add that all the uh, top states contributing to the federal coffer are blue states. Sorry. Go yes. Ahead. Yes. Thank you. So on both on both sides of it, both from taking and 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 putting in, it's opposite from what you claim from the, is 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 the real world, as you say. And then I'll also add when you talked about the lumber issue, I want to point out that the issues we've seen in supply chains over the past year, right, are not. To, to simply attribute them to people getting paychecks and saying that's why we have these supply chain issues is grossly misrepresenting the true issue of what's at hand here. We've seen issues across, even even internationally with supply chain issues, that in, in countries and in regions where they, they didn't implement handouts or whatever you wish to call them. The issue is that because of COVID, we had certain industries slow down or shut down because people physically couldn't be in these factories because certain industries didn't, didn't have the demand. And what we're seeing is reverberations from that. Nobody imagined, for example, with this wood industry, as you say, no one imagined that during a pandemic that the housing market would have a boom. Nobody imagined that. So at a time when we had less people working because people were getting sick and dying and because we couldn't have people working in factories at the same levels, we couldn't have the same number of people in these factories, so there was less supply coming out. At the same time, you had a housing boom, 
of course you're going to have now a lack of a, a, a run on lumber. So to, to simply say, though, that it's all because of paychecks is grossly misrepresenting the wide range of issues that actually go into a supply chain and in the global and, and international supply chain. Uh, to say that's because of checks in people's mail that's causing is a gross misrepresentation of all the factors that Sorry. actually have gone into the, the it point is in this noted. number of supply chains, including... समय असि यह गल जारी रखा एक छोटी जी ब्रेक के बाद तुम वेखते रहो द वे फॉरवर्ड द वे फॉरवर्ड इज तौर फिर तू स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह समय जिमें आप गल की है कि एक स्टीरोटाइप किया जाता है कि बई एक कम्यूनिटी है काम नहीं करती हैंड आउट्स लेंगे और पार्टी उन्होंने हैल्प करती है यू नो और बिजनेस के अगेंस्ट है उदा ही रिपब्लिकन पार्टी स्टीरोटाइप किया जाता है जी कि ये रेसिस्ट है हूँ मैं थोड़े तो पूछना चाहगा कि साढ़े जेडे अगर इंडियन कम्यूनिटी के सिख कम्यूनिटी के कोई यू नो ऑफिशियल्स इलेक्टिड ऑफिशियल्स आए सामने दो गवर्नर्स प्रेजिडेंशियल कैंडीडेट्स वो तो रिपब्लिकन पार्टी तो आए हैं तो तुम ये गल कि कह सकते हो या की तुम कहोगे इस बारे कि डज दिस होल्ड एनी ट्रोथ कि रिपब्लिकन पार्टी हैज सम मोर ऑफ रेसिज्म इन इट दैन द डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी या सो आई वांट टू सेइंग दैट यू नो आई डोंट बिलीव दैट somebody by being republican is inherently racist so i don't you know i don't think the average republican um just by being a republican should be labeled a racist or anything like that hmm. what i will say is that there are a lot of things that the republican party uh whatever you wish to believe that to be at this point uh they that 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 either ignore certain racial issues that have existed in this country or exacerbate current racial issues or pre-existing racial issues i mean the biggest thing that i can think of is when you look at what's happening right now is all of a sudden there's attack on critical race theory something that's been taught for decades without issue there's been no issue i mean what is critical race theory teach it teaches that there's there was historic racism i mean there was slavery then you had chinese exclusion asian exclusion in the early 1900s i mean you've had you've had series at, you've had event after event of there being racial racially charged policies and efforts in this country to discriminate against certain groups of people and all that we're trying to do is teach people that this happened and all of a sudden now there's a, 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 a republican conservative led push to get rid of this this critical race theory in schools i mean how how are you going to how are you going to explain to kids the history of this nation properly if you don't explain to them that black people were slaves they were regarded as three fifths of a human being that we then said that there's no person should be allowed in this country as a full citizen unless they're white and then even we got super specific and said chinese people aren't allowed in this country then in the 40s we said if you're japanese or really fine any asian we're going to put you in a camp during during for four years during a world war yes. so yeah i mean the, the, i mean the, the fact that republicans refuse to acknowledge these issues or promote promote policies that ignore these issues मूवमेंट है If you you support equality for, for all, why would you oppose it? A critical race theory da, a voting rights da issue unnecessary issue create kita hoya. There's no evidence of voter fraud at least for the last 30, 40 years. Why? Where have these issues come from? A, a, what, what are these conspiracies? Look, let, let me ask you one. Th- uh, well, I'm going to point. I'm going to bullet point it. Right? Yes. You can go to vote. Right? You go to the polling station to vote, but you don't show your ID. What kind of crap is that? Like dude, you're heading into a uh, a uh, fraud, right? Oh, it's not required to show your ID. What do you mean it's Sadir, not required to show Sadir, your ID? Sadir. You can walk in and say I'm so and so and just get a ballot and vote. Uh, not doing. Sadir. Talking about racism. Mm. Look, Republicans are not racist people, all right? Uh as Sami mentioned a very critical point. Every time in history there were different people that were targeted. even the italians were targeted when they came out greeks were targeted the irish were targeted anybody that new came out were targeted it's our time to be targeted and our time to pay dues and hopefully in 20 30 years this is not going to go up it's not a republican or a democrat thing this hate is not a democrat or republican thing it's human nature we are human right we hate we are can they not call you we are the call you bro everybody's going to hate on you until you go out 
and, and spread love. Love is the only way. I, I, you know why I chose to become a Republican? It's not because I want to repu- I want to uh, represent Republicans or or I want to run on a Republican ticket. No, 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 no. I like to fight from within, right? I go with a turban into the heart of supposedly those tags of Republicans are racist. I go in, I shake hands, I talk in front of them, I grab the mic, and I spread love. And guess what? To me, I don't want to run for politics. But I can tell you one thing. I'm very involved to the biggest level possible, where I will go in and teach everybody what sick he is. You know, we go through the whole dilemma. I, last week, uh, last month, my son was targeted. He went through a hate crime. Guess what? I get it. I get it at six, uh, as sick, you know, that we cannot target other races. You know, when somebody calls my son Muhammad, or my, my neighbor comes out and says, Salam Alaikum to me, that lived with me for God, seven years, it hurts. I'm not saying, hey, you know, no, go attack the Muslims. No, that's not what humanity is all about. I get it. My reason of becoming a Republican is I could fight that battle of letting people know the hardcore, supposedly patriotic people, uh, you know, who we are. We have enough of you guys on the Democratic side trying to uh, trying to teach people uh, diversity. Well, we don't have enough of you in the Republican Party. You should be watching this. You should call us. Join the damn Republican Party because as a sick, you'll make the biggest difference joining the Republican Party, not the Democrat Party, because the Democrat Party already represents the diversity. Who's going to teach the Republican Party what diversity is? I am. Same. All right? And I hope one day Same turns around and comes with me to these uh, uh, so-called uh, Republican uh, events, whether you're Democrat or not. It doesn't matter. Every sick should become a Republican. Because Summit. that's the fight you want to fight as a sick, uh, as a, as a politician. Summit, great, go for it, go, go, run for election. More power to you. As a Republican, I will donate to you. I will have all my friends donate to you. Because to me, Sikhi first, America next. Not India, not China, not Pakistan, not Hawaii. America first is my rule. I live here, I earn here, America first is what I live by, and Sikhi comes with that, and both of them are on the same pedestal for me. Same, your response, quickly. Yeah, so I'm just, you know, I, I, I respect what you're, what you're trying to do by bringing diversity, but I think the crux of your answer is premised on exactly what I was saying, which is that there is one party which embraces diversity already, and which already understands different racial cultures and racial issues. For and there's the wrong a party, reasons, my there's friend. A party, totally wrong reasons. And hold on, hold on. And there's a party, there's a party that clearly doesn't, which is why you feel the need to go change that. So I'm just absolutely, I'm, I, absolutely. I appreciate. I appreciate uh, we're not giving free handouts. We're not making our people un- unable to, so the, to really work in the society. So Democrats race. are doing a great job by digging holes for minorities. On the, on the issue of race, on the issue of race, which is what we're discussing here, your answer simply proved what I said, which is that there's I one. Am, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But okay. there's enough Democrats. You guys take the easy road. Don't take the easy road. Oh, Democrats are going to embrace us. As a matter of fact, I know more Republicans in power that are Indian than anybody else. As a matter of fact, many Sikhs are being represented in the next few months. You will see what's happening. Democrats are not embracing us. They're, you're going to go vote. Uh, you're going to go run as a Democrat. Great power to you. I, I think you're I, very I, well I this, so You gave your reason. For, you gave your reason for why you supported the, the the Republican Party. It's because you saw that there was a need to bring diversity there. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the re- which you know. I'm just saying proves the antecedent that there isn't currently diversity. But uh, that point aside, I agree with you 100%. Let me let me. I want to explain why I am a Democrat, and why I'm a Democrat isn't because I look to see where I would get hugged first. That's not why I became a Democrat. No, if you're going to run, buddy, listen, man. I've, I've been in this game too long. I know what's happening. All right, you're going to get an easy seat with the Democrats, and you're going to be happy about it. I'm trying. I'm just. I. No, I'm Guys. just trying to. I really appreciate this healthy debate that we've had today. I thank you both so much for bringing your perspectives. You know, our community has a perspective of knowledge. We are learning from you. All the most important things I want to point out today, which I want to point out today, which Sadbir Ji has said, and which I want to point out today, which is the central thing that we know, is the role of the government. 
ਅਗਰ ਰੇਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਡਿਫੀਟ ਕਰਨੇ ਜੋ ਦੋ ਪਾਰਟੀਆਂ ਜੋ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟਲੀ ਦੇਖਦੀ ਹਨ ਉਹ ਹੈਗਾ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਰੋਲ ਸਮੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਸਿਸਟਮੈਟਿਕ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਯੂ نو ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਨੂੰ ਕਨਫਰੰਟ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਨ ਅ ਸਿਸਟਮੈਟਿਕ ਵੇ ਇਨ ਅ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਵੇ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ 1965 ਦਾ ਸਿਵਲ ਰਾਈਟਸ ਐਕਟ ਸੀਗਾ ਹੋਰ ਕਈ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਹ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਨਾਨ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਐਕਟਸ ਬਟ ਸਤਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਪਾਰਟੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਮੋਸਟਲੀ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਸੋਲੂਸ਼ਨ ਨੂੰ ਲੱਭਦੀ ਹੈ ਦੈਟ ਡਸ ਨਾਟ ਮੀਨ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਆਲ ਰੇਸਿਸ ਇਟਸ ਜਸਟ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਦੋਨੋਂ ਆਈਡੀਓਲੋਜੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਸਮਝਣਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਫਾਇਦੇ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਲੋੜਿੰਦਾ ਗੱਲ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਵਿਖਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸ਼ੁਕਰੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਬੋਥ ਦ ਗੈਸਟ ਫਾਰ ਟੇਕਿ